I guess, yeah, I guess it, I guess it is a bit weird. Hey sailors, welcome back to Cruising as Crew. My name is Lucy and today I'm going to be giving you some advice on how to deal with an awkward roommate. But before we get started, I just want to remind you to click like and subscribe for some more cruise ship content. And uh, if you follow me over on Instagram at Cruising as Crew, you can help me decide on the next video topic. But as for now, let's get into it. Right, so if you're going on a cruise ship and you're not an officer, the likelihood is that you're going to be sharing a cabin. And unfortunately, it's not guaranteed that you're going to be sharing a cabin with someone that you are compatible with. And whilst I hope you do, just in case you don't, I'm going to give you some tips on how to deal with that situation. Numero uno. Effective communication. I'm not gonna lie to you, it took me a long time to master effective communication. Um, and I think I'm gonna go back in time now and tell you a little story about my awkward roommate. Um, let's call her Abigail. So Abigail had to move in with me for reasons and we got on well at work. So I was like, oh, this will be absolutely fine. I have no problem with Abigail moving in. Um, however, there was a few things that I didn't take into consideration when Abigail moved in. One of them was age. Now, whilst I'm a big believer that age is just a number, there was a considerable age gap between me and Abigail. So I was like 21 at the time and she was, I believe, early 40s. Um, now that created tension because, and also she had been doing ships for a while. So she wanted to go to work and come back to the cabin, have a shower and go to bed. And that's all she wanted to do, which I completely respect. However, because I was young and quite new to ships, I wanted to go out, socialize, meet people. Um, and that created some tension because it just didn't align with what she wanted. You know, it would have been ideal. It would have been ideal for me if she had come out and we'd have socialized together and it would have been ideal for her if we'd have both just got into the cabin after work, had a shower and gone to bed. However, we had very different ideas of what we wanted to use our free time to do. Another one was uh, we had very like religious differences. So um, she would have quite a lot of like shrines up and um, I think shrines the right word. But anyway, just a lot of religious things around the cabin. And to be honest, it did not bother me in the slightest. But it was only when other people started, like if they did pop in, um, they would be like, do you mind that being there? And I'm like, no, it doesn't bother me. But it, other people would be like, oh, I don't, uh, you know, I don't think I'd like that. Which is, that's their problem and they didn't have to deal with it. But it was only, you know, sometimes people say something and it gets you thinking and you're like, oh, I guess it's, I guess it's whatever. Um, and also bringing people back to the cabin. So it would have been nice if I could, you know, bring some friends back just to like not have a party, but just, you know, sit in the cabin and chill out. Um, but she was like, no, absolutely not. No one's allowed in the cabin except you and me. And I was like, okay, fine. Like that's what you're comfortable with. No problem. Um, and then there was the personality thing. So I am, as you can probably tell, a bit of a talker um, and she was not. So we would get back to the cabin after work. She would have a shower and she would get into bed and that's it. We didn't talk. She, we did not talk. And I was like, okay, I'm not gonna take this personally because she didn't want to talk to anyone. You know, I think uh, we worked in the spa and you, well, wherever you work on a cruise ship, you spend all day talking to people. So I can completely understand that if in your off time, you don't want to talk, I get it. So I didn't take it personally. However, it did make me a bit like, um, anxious because I was like can I not talk or she wants complete silence so you know and all these things although they're kind of little things they do start to add up and create tension anyone who knows me knows I will pretty much do anything for an easy life um and that's exactly what I did I shut my mouth and I just kind of went yep yep so when she said oh you know when you go out at night and you come in it, it wakes me up because, not because I come in and I'm loud, because I was on the top bunk and anyone who's worked on a cruise ship knows that that, that ladder is squeaky. So you go up the ladder and the bed is, so it's like eh, eh, eh. So that's what woke her up. 
Now, what I should have said was, well, you can go on the top bunk and I'll go on the bottom bunk, but I didn't. I was just like, yeah, that's fine. I'll come in. I think she gave me a curfew of like 12 o'clock and stupidly I was like, yep, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, no one was allowed to ring the cabin. No one was allowed in the cabin. I wasn't allowed to spray perfume because of like asthma and the various. So anyway, oh yeah, she didn't want me to put pictures up. This is turning into a rant. But anyway, so you can kind of see that one like quite normal request because I just kept saying, yeah, yeah, it turned into like more and more and like, don't put pictures up don't put this up and it was only when one of my friends was like this is a little bit out of order the fact that like you have a curfew she's allowed to have all her religious things up but you can't have a picture of your mom up um and just various other things and it was only then I was like I guess yeah I guess it I guess it is a bit weird and the problem was is I had tried to make her so comfortable because I was so aware that I was like, no, it's not just my cabin, it's her cabin too. So I was like, yep, it needs to be 50-50. But it got to the point where I was like, but it's not 50-50, I'm living in her cabin. Like, that's now what it feels like. It's not my cabin, it's her cabin, and I'm just a guest. So then what happened is because I didn't speak my mind, um, all these things start to fester, and then it leads to resentment. And then we had an argument. And you know, and that's, and it's not her problem. It's completely my problem because I should have, I should have communicated it to her and said, actually, I don't think that's fair. Like, I think I should be able to have a picture of my mom up or whatever it was. I can't even remember now, but it, it's not her fault. It's my fault for not speaking my mind because no one's a mind reader. So if someone asks you to do something and you're like, yeah, that's fine. They're like, oh, okay, she that's fine. She doesn't mind doing it. This is great. And it's only if you say, actually, I think I have a problem with that, that they're going to be like, oh, okay. So, yeah, I should have communicated it. And that was where I kind of learned this lesson. And from then on, I was better at communicating with my roommates. Realistically, if you tell someone that they're doing something that annoys you, they're going to stop doing it. No one wants to be annoying. And if they do continue doing it, then you have a problem because they're doing something purposely knowing that it's gonna piss you off. Like the only problems I've had is when I don't say my mind, when I don't speak my mind. And actually that is in every single relationship because until you make someone aware of something, they're just like, oh, this is fine. Like throwing my wet towel on the floor after I've got out the shower is fine or I don't know, whatever. But the point is you have to say, look, I don't like that. And honestly, 99% of the time they'll stop. And I know sometimes it can be hard because you don't want to come across as like naggy or annoying yourself, but it's a 50, 50, you're living together. It's your cabin and it's their cabin you have to be comfortable. You both have to be comfortable. And the only way that's gonna happen is if you talk about things. Numero dos. Try and see things from their point of view. So going back to Abigail, um, when she kind of said, I don't want anyone in the cabin except me and you, you're not allowed friends around, that really like got my back up and I was like, that's so ridiculous. Why can I not have a friend round for a cup of tea or whatever? Um, and I was like, right, Lucy, try and think of it from her point of view. And I did. So I was like, right, they're your friends. They're not Abigail's friends. Although I trust them, Abigail doesn't necessarily trust them because she doesn't know them. And all Abigail, Abigail's valuables are in this cabin along with mine. So actually, yeah, it kind of makes sense that she doesn't want me bringing a stranger back to the cabin, a stranger to her, because you know, everything she owns is in here and it's a small enough space as it is. And you know, maybe she's worried that if she lets me bring one person back that I'm gonna be bringing 10 people back. I don't know, so, but it did help me um, feel more comfortable with it when I kind of sat with it and I tried to see it from her point of view. 
Um, so that is a, that's a big thing. And also, if someone is asking you to do something, if your roommate is asking you to do something that you're like, that's a little bit weird or whatever, um, just do yourself a favor and don't get mad straight away. Uh, just try and be like, okay, let me try and see this from your point of view. Or better yet, ask them to explain it. Like there is honestly nothing wrong. If someone wants you to do something, then yeah, give me a reason and I'll do it, but give me a reason. Why do you want me to do, you know, do whatever. And then once they've given you a valid reason, you can make your decision being more comfortable with, well, hopefully more comfortable with it. And it's not going to fester because you've talked it through. So those are my two top tips, effective communication and try and see it from their point of view. And if that doesn't work, then the last resort is you can, you can move cabins, like you can have a brand new cabin mate. However, this isn't ideal because there's a lot of paperwork involved and you actually have to wait for someone to leave. Um, so there's an available bed in another cabin. And even then, like you might not be able to choose who you share with. Um, but actually, something that I do wanna say, don't move in with your BFF. Just don't do it, okay? Really. So on a ship, you will find someone or maybe a group of people that you do get really, really close to. And what happens is you spend all your time off together. You probably will work in the same department. So you spend all day working together and then you get off together in port and you go out together in the evenings. Like, and then you think, oh my God, we get on so well because, you know, we do everything together. Wouldn't it be amazing to live together? No. Like, you need a break from someone, even if you love them and you think they're the most amazing person in the world. Like, you need that time apart. Like, I don't care who it is. You need some escape from them. What if they piss you off one day and you literally have no escape? No. And also, you don't know someone until you live with them. Because Stephanie might be your best friend, but she might like to get up at six o'clock in the morning every morning. And you might like lions. Well, when that alarm's going off every morning at 6 a.m., that's gonna piss you off. Stephanie is gonna try, is gonna start to piss you off. And you know what? Because you're BFFs, it's gonna be really awkward when you have to say, you know, I know you get up at six o'clock every morning, but can you like not? Or, and that goes back to effective communication. It's a lot easier to um, communicate your feelings when there's just that roommate dynamic of like, we're roommates, and we're nothing more. However, when a like a, a friendship, a relationship comes in the midst of it, we all know it's really difficult because you care for that person and you don't want to upset them. The best living situations that I have had is when I'm with someone that I'm not friends with. We get on and we respect each other, but we're not friends. I'm not going to like go out with you in the day. We, you know, if yes, we probably work together, but we're not like really, really close at work. They are the best living situations that I have had because there's enough space between us that, you know, if they do piss me off because something they do in the cabin, there's a, there's space. So, and that, that's the other thing, like if you move in with your BFF and actually they're a bloody nightmare to live with, that can ruin your friendship, you know, which, is really sad. It's happened to me and that's why I'm saying I wouldn't recommend it. So if you get an opportunity to move in with your BFF, before you accept, please just think long and hard about if you're actually compatible. You know, do you both like to go out and party? Do you both like to stay up and talk? Do you both, you know, because you can get on but you can be complete opposites and Opposites attract when you're not living together, okay? Because when you're living together with an opposite, it ain't good. 
So anyway, that's my two cents on how to deal with awkward roommates. Um, I really hope that helps you. And uh, well, actually, I hope you never have to use it. I hope you never get an awkward roommate. But if you do, then I hope this helps. But thank you very much for watching and uh, I will see you in the next video.